Welcome to Snapdragon in 5, a new series where we talk about all things Snapdragon in different spots around San Diego, Qualcomm's hometown. I'm your host, Tech Me Out. I'm a content creator, tech enthusiast, and an entrepreneur. And like many of you, I'm also a part of the Snapdragon Insiders, a global community full of millions of Snapdragon fans. Insiders are a vocal community. You ask us what you want to know, and we'll tell you. And in this series, we're gonna be answering a few of those questions. Today, we're here at Torrey Pines Glider Port, overlooking the beautiful Pacific Ocean, and I'm joined with my special guest, Judd Heap. How are you doing today, Judd? Great. Are you ready for your five questions? I think so. Okay, so today, <laughs> we're gonna be talking about mobile photography. And for the very first question, when it comes to cameras and phones, they've both been around for quite some time now, but when exactly did they come together? It came together over 20 years ago, back in the year 2000. Um, the first uh, phone, you know, had a camera on it. Everyone was like, why have a camera with a phone? Yes. But it proved to be pretty useful. But back then, uh, the image sensors were pretty poor. It was very low resolution, about 0.35 megapixels, which is less than VGA, which is, you know, worse than an old TV set. We've come quite a long way since then. Yes, we have. And speaking of coming a long way, in a previous episode, I actually spoke with Don McGuire, and he briefly mentioned AI and cameras and phones. How would you say AI impacts mobile photography? Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, it's been changing a lot over the past few years. Um, so for photography, AI helps the camera really understand what it's seeing. It can know the difference between skin and hair and fabric, and it can optimize the textures in each one of those cases. In video, AI is used to really help create things like better lighting, which maybe is not there at nighttime, or even uh, improve resolution. And finally, um, AI can be used even after the fact, after you do a shoot, you can, you can use it to remove something out of the image that you don't want, like a photo bomber. Ah, I like that, because I've definitely been in those scenarios where I've needed to do so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know I see a lot of ads regarding phones yeah. and their camera specs. What would you say is the most important feature to know? It's kind of a funny way to answer the question, but the most important feature is the feature that's most important to you. I usually choose a camera with a really good telephoto lens because I'm interested in long range shots. But other than telephoto, one of the other things you should really look for is a really good ISP or image signal processor. So the chip that's inside the phone makes a big difference on how the pixels coming out of the image sensor are processed. And so the ISP, it kind of sounds like a DSP, which you know, you'd think it might be running software, but it's not. It's a hardware core that actually you know, interfaces to the image sensor and processes the pixels in a, in a true pipeline. And then lastly, what you want to look for is a phone that has really strong AI capability, because like we talked about more and more, photography will rely more and more on AI to get the best image. That makes sense. And it explains a lot, too, in terms of like when new phones come out and the specs might be the same. Yeah. It seems like there's a lot going behind the scenes. That's right. Yeah. Cameras, you know, for example, a lot of cameras have kept 12 or 13 megapixels for mm -hmm. many, many years, but still the image quality has gone up and up. Yes. Because the ISP and the AI portion has got a lot better. That's very true. Now for our fourth question, what do you think the future of mobile photography looks like? I think the future will give you more creative control through AI. I think you'll be able to do things like swap out lenses electronically without having to carry you know, the heavy lenses in your pocket. Also being able to have AI help frame the scene for you, do the composition without even you having to think about it. And lastly, you know, all the pro features like being able to set ISO, shutter speed, aperture, give the user creative control and give them the ability to really shoot shots like you would on a pro camera. Do you think we'll ever get to a point where phones overtake DSLRs? I think we're sort of already there. Okay. Uh, if you look at sheer volumes, um, Qualcomm powered more than 1.6 billion cameras last year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look at the DSLR market, it's about 1 100th one of that now. Mm -hmm. So by volume, we're already there. But digital still cameras and DSLRs will still have a niche for the professional market. So uh, wedding photographers, uh, sports photographers, they'll still, they will still need a camera that has a large image sensor and gives them total control. Now that's very valid because it would be kind of weird to show up to a wedding as a videographer or photographer with a phone. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, wow, but um, for our very last question today, what is your favorite photo that you've taken most recently? My wife and I uh, are fortunate to live really close to a beach. So last weekend, uh, we took our dog down to the beach and we got some great photos of her right at sunset. So they're really good HDR photos and you can see 
you know, the, the sun peeking around a rock, but still see the details in her, in her fur and in the rock face, uh, e even in this, you know, the bright, uh, harsh sunlight. So that's a wrap for Snapdragon 5 Season 1. Thank you so much for joining us today, Judd. And to all of you out there, you can feel free to hit the like button and subscribe button. Until the next one, we'll see you then.